Tere hommikust! Guten Morgen! Dobre utra! Good morning! Goeie morgen! These are some of the languages I've, you know, studied, spoken in, and today I chose English. And I'm going to briefly explain why, because people have asked me already. Um, so yeah, my name is Otto Metas, um, and I invite you to sort of relax a little bit, take a seat, and you know, join me on a journey. So I'm going to write a thought train here that hasn't reached, reached its destination yet, but maybe we'll get somewhere. Uh, I'm going to look at language and what humanity has gotten itself into. I'm taking a few risks here today, you know, English as a language is the first one. Uh, so please bear with me and see if you can get some fresh food for thought, right? Some new ideas. And even though I have done research in IT and AI most recently, I'm not an expert on language. That's one of the key reasons I'm here in front of you as well, is not to tell you something, but to learn from you. I have this idea, recurring idea, that I, I, I sort of live by is, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room, right? So, um, I invite you to start maybe a small discussion after my presentation with me, to educate me a little bit, uh, and maybe correct me in my ways if I make some mistakes here today. And what's uh, about English? I chose English because, you know, previous presenters have also mentioned this. This is uh, an international effort. We are, in this, this day and age, we're, we're working on an inter international stage. We're not working only in Estonia or abroad, but, you know, it's interconnected. And also we have a few members in the audience, probably off-site and online as well, who use English. I know at least two presenters after me will be presenting in English, so to cater to them as well a little bit. Um, that's a long intro, though. So, before I, I jump in, I'm going to say a few words about myself and who am I. So, on the left, um, you can see a few companies I've worked over the years with. Um, I have about 13 years of IT experience. Uh, three of those years, or three past years, I've, I've mostly focused on AI. Um, on, the, on the right side of the screen, you see some of the projects or screenshots of those projects I've done. Uh, I wor work at AIRA, or AI and Robotics Estonia, uh, so there's a few videos about that. Uh, on the bottom right, you, you see a screenshot from a paper or a preprint, to be precise. Uh, I investigated language biases in uh, social networks through AI uh, tools. and. In the middle, there's like a screenshot of an album cover. Uh, we uh, participated in the first ever Eurovision AI song contests and uh, received the third prize. So these are some of the sort of um, examples of what I've done. Um, and this is a picture of me getting inspiration. You know, I have to gain or bring in some inspiration from outside to be able to do all that kind of cool stuff. So on the left, you, you see me on the top uh, singing and dancing to classical Estonian uh, folk music. Uh, on the left bottom, you see me playing bass on a big stage in a metal band. And on the right, um, I, I, I really enjoy being in nature and taking whatever outdoors has to offer. Uh, in this case, I'm strapped to my snowboard on a hill somewhere, but I also do hiking, walking, swimming, running, that kind of stuff. Right, so I was invited here uh, as a surprise to me, and I'm, I'm really grateful and honored to be speaking to you guys. Uh, so, but what to, what to tell people who are experts in language, right? Uh, I could choose the path of going and say something about implementations and possible tooling out there, but first I have to understand what is language. Uh, to sort of set the premise, and, and I'm going to take a few minutes here just to have a common baseline among us 
for my presentation. And let's take a look at the definition then. So, Cambridge Dictionary defines language as a system of communication consisting of sounds, words, and grammar. Yeah, simple enough. It's pretty close to the Estonian one as well. Um, but I think we can dive a bit deeper there. So, uh, let's look at it. Let's, let's look at the definition. So, we had language, right? Uh, language was a system of communication. Now, I think there is something we can further define as you know, the word communication. What is communication? Communication uh, is defined as the various methods of sem sending information uh, between people and devices, places, especially phones, computers, etc. Again, we have a phrase in there, a word in there, information. What is information? Information is defined as a collection of facts about a situation, person, or event, etc. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this? Now we have fact, right? What is a fact? Fact is something that is known to have happened or to exist, especially something for which proof exists or about which there is information. So we're getting tangled here a little bit. I hope you agree that, you know, now we have to look at proof. So what is proof? Proof is a fact or a piece of information that shows that something exists or is true. You know, we're defining things through other things, and that's completely fine, as you probably can tell me. But I, I think something is really missing here. So if we look at this picture and these uh, sort of elements of it, is this what language is? Um, so, the dictionary is compiled by the Institute of Estonian Language. Fair a bit better here, so thank you for that. Uh, but you end up with definitions again, which sort of circle back and cross-reference each other. So for me, as a, as a language user, uh, this, is, uh, this can be quite confusing, right? Um, what is language then? Um, the, the notion also ties into the title of my presentation, The Quick Brown Fox Jumps Over the Lazy Dog. Do you know what this sentence is used for? Um, so the sentence I just said is, is an English version of a, of a pangram, which is basically a sentence that contains all the letters of the alphabet. Uh, the phrase is commonly used for touch typing practice, testing typewriters and fonts, and you know, seeing the visual representation of language in its all, all of its glory. Uh, so have you ever wondered what other silly purposes we use language for? You know, it has... So, so the sentence is really... You know, it, 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 I'm, I'm kind of this guy right now, right? What is language? What do we do with it? Where is it going? You know, so I, I, I promised a small addition uh, for simplifying language explanation for myself, uh, for people like me. Um, but before I propose my sort of addition, um, let me tell you a small story. Does anybody recognize this picture from the audience? Yeah, I see a few nods here and there. Right, so I'm briefly I'm going to explain what this is. This is a picture of, uh, of a place underground in a small cellar in the countryside in Estonia. And it's meant for this dark room ritual, right? So what does it mean? You go in here, you bring your foods, uh, you go in here for five to seven days, some decide to go for even longer. You get settled, you turn off the lights, and you stay in silence and in darkness for five to seven days, some even longer. So, what happens then? By the way, I, I went there, and, you know, the first few days, what happens is everybody sleeps. They just reset their biological clock. You don't have any external inputs, stimuli. So you just sort of ground yourself, um, you won't speak, you won't really interact with anybody, you don't have your phone, you don't have any light coming in, so you don't know what time it is. And that's the common sort of experience, is everybody sleeps for the first few days. Then what happens is very individual. Um, 
there are some spiritual journeys people take, and you know you can hear all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, for me, um, I, I think it's very tied to the the purpose of why you're going there. And for me, I, I just wanted to see what happens. And what happened is, uh, and this is sort of what I built my presentation around, is I notice if I don't speak to anybody for seven days and I don't have this language, you know, syntax and language constructs, etc. If I don't use language at all, um, the subconscious surfaces first, and for me at least, it's very hard to explain in, in, in simple terms, but my inner voice went away. Probably everybody, not, not everybody, but most people have an inner voice that nags them at the end of the day, says, hey, you should have done this, this and that. Tomorrow is a day you'll have to do this and that. Not in this darkness. So after you've reset, this inner voice goes away, at least for me, and you start thinking, if there exists such a thing, you'll start thinking in experiences, right? You, you experience and you're like in that experience. You don't have to explain it to anybody, you don't have to explain it to yourself. You're just there, you understand the meaning behind everything, what you've experienced at least. So, and this comes back to the definition a little bit, is somebody says a, a thought is a one worded, worded picture in your mind. I would say that, in other words, a thought is a learned construct we use to sort of simplify our lives, right? Uh, mainly for conveying this inherent, inherent meaning I have to other people around me. So I promised a simplifying addition to the previous schematic. So for me, language is all about meaning. And luckily, meaning is a term that's left undefined uh, and oftentimes because it's, it's a core term in semiotics. So, you know, I have a shortcut or, or a way out here, so using meaning, right? Um, and let's investigate a little bit what meaning could be. What is meaning? So I'm going to dip into philosophy a little bit, so bear with me. Um, there are some cool people in the past, like Lucretius, Plato, later even Descartes, who have pondered about these topics. So, what is something? What is a chair? Is an age-old question, right? They all thought about it. What is a chair? And they don't really want to know what is a chair, but they're thinking more in the sense of how humans think. What is deep thinking? What do we consider meaning? Is there a symbol that inherently encompasses the whole meaning. They're, they're thinking about these things. And, you know, I, I really kind of like this idea of Plato's idea that, yes, there is a perfect chair, but it's never in the real world. We only see reflections or, you know, shadows, alternatives of the real thing that exists somewhere, somewhere in the perfect plane. This also ties into a little bit of the Plato's uh, cave allegory maybe you've heard this one as well, is, uh, and I'm not going to use the full, full allegory, but a part of it is when you sit at the mouth, mouth of a cave and there is a light at the back of the cave you cannot see directly, and something between you and the, uh, the fire, you might see uh, like shadows on the wall. So you think, okay, that's something that's at the back of the cave I can see, right? But actually it's just the shadow of the thing you see on a wall. So I'm, I'm trying to sort of open up your mind a little bit in, into this, how do we use language? Why do we use it? And I think a problem arises here with this representational uh, thought where we give this perfect idea, some symbol, some wording, and try to convey this. And there's you know, of course, practical reasons for doing that. Um, even if we try to find general meaning for anything, it seems to be mission impossible. So everyone seems to have an individual meaning. You know, I, being there for seven days in the darkness, I also found that I'm very subjective. Um, and 
trying to express that through language is difficult because everybody has their own sort of meaning. Um, I wouldn't use the word fact, whereas uh, the Americans had this alternative facts culture for a bit, but it's, it's, it's really tied to meaning for me. Um, so, just a small sort of question. What would happen if we could forego language and convey meaning to each other in another way? Just, to, just something to think about. Um, for now, we don't have such an interface yet. Maybe in the future we will. Um, for example, there are companies that are, that are trying to establish neural links between people, right? So, brain connected to another brain, to another brain, to another brain, so we can sort of share information, sorry, uh, share information in a different way. And again, I'm not trying to attack anybody, I'm just challenging you to think about this, right? If we're standing on a ledge somewhere, um, what do we do to get to the other side, to reach the other person? Today, we use language. We build a bridge using language, and you know, there are... Uh, the, the phrase often uses building or, or bridging a gap, very business term-like, right? So you could say that, hey, the problem is solved. We have this bridge, right? We don't need anything else. So what about conflicts at work? Or conflicts with your partner at home? or internal conflicts, even in, in, in the sense of harmful, harmful self-talk, right? I, I said something, you go to bed late at night, and you, you speak to yourself. Sometimes it can be harmful as well. So, losing those constructs, uh, this language is a must, or language is a default I use for communication, uh, letting go of that idea has helped me uh, sort of reach some uh, deeper understanding first of myself and the people around me as well, believe it or not. Some might argue that I have just sort of, through these conflict pictures, I have just described the human condition, and this is what we're, you know, dealing with, and we cannot um, do anything with it. We have to accept that we're going to have conflicts, and we don't have anything better or we cannot adjust language for a better use. So, I would say that technology is, is very, very specific and unforgiving. Technology will not accept our, our excuses. And for, for this slide, I, I borrowed the principle from computer science, where it says, garbage in, garbage out. So if we put garbage into a machine, it has to come out of it someday. So if we embed, embed conflict and the problems that come with language, those have to express themselves at some point as well. Um, and this can be potentially devastating for humans, because you know, we, humans, we, we tend to maybe argue and be in conflict for eight hours, and then we get tired and we go home. A machine does not do that. A, ma a machine does not get tired. So, if we input and put conflict into a machine, um, it might be devastating for us. So, are we doomed? Uh, many well-known leaders have certainly thought so. For example, Elon Musk and the late, great Stephen Hawking have expressed this idea that it's going to be all over soon. Um, I must point out that they are not AI, AI experts, though. So I would say, no, not yet. Not everything is doomed. Um, there is plenty we can do. As a foundational shift, we can already start changing the idea of ourselves. In short, the idea to strive for could be something in the lines of, I'm not the king of the world. Yes, for, for the longest period of time I was, but maybe not today anymore, at least not in the future. So this could lay a very strong foundation for the next step in human evolution, uh, indeed, where we collaborate not only with other people, but with technology in a more meaningful way.
okay, that's all nice and dandy, right? What is this guy on the stage saying? But how can we take advantage and how can we make an effort in language technology? What is it we can do as the experts in this field? So first of all, I would say let's not build technology to make our mistakes for us, in some cases even amplify our mistakes for us. Um, remember, a machine does not need rest per se. Yes, it is fine to use technology to understand ourselves better in terms of language, uh, but we should not place all embeds on large language-based models like GPD-3, for example. Yes, bear with me. Um, even machine learning in general is, is coming from a black box sort of uh, thinking. Uh, it does not matter that they bring economical benefits to us. In the long run, we have to think a little bit broader than this. Remember, we are not the kings of the world or queens, at least not for long. Uh, so let's instead focus on solutions that we understand ourselves. Explainable AI is one of the key terms here I'm using. Um, if you haven't heard about it, look it up at home. There's plenty of tools in explainable AI. Uh, there, are different, uh, there are many different approaches uh, that can bring value if implemented properly, but we have to start using them. Um, for example, there are quite, quite cool knowledge-based expert systems with reasoning capabilities that uh, beat any Siri and Alexa system. Um, and recently, researchers have even started making uh, improvements and developments on those black box methods, like machine learning models, where it's partially uh, being able to explain itself. But I, I'm a little bit, you know, skeptical here because uh, machine learning models are very good at their specific uh, tasks, but at least today, they are just very good imitators, and we don't really understand how they imitate, as we don't understand our own brains yet. So um, just think about this. But anywho, I, I think all is not lost. And um, I think the, the, the important part here is be, be the best person you can be, right? This is, oh, very flowers and love for everybody. But I'm, I'm trying to make it more practical by saying build solutions around meaning and not economical value or, you know, novelty or whatever. Build solutions around meaning. Um, strive towards directness. Uh, for example, very human-like uh, attributes we have. Uh, cynicism, sarcasm, double meanings. Eliminate those if possible. I'm not saying we should lose the color and fun in language. I'm just saying, take care of solutions you're building. Um, and if you see that, yes, those solutions are better because of it, maybe try to implement some of those ideas in your daily life. I promise you those conflicts at work and at home, those will be lessened at least. So, uh, finally, I, I think this is one of the things I want to leave you with. You, my dear language experts, are the ones who are at the forefront here. I see people smiling, I see people, you know, maybe even... I haven't seen a yawn yet, so that's a good sign. But, you know, first, many of you were very skeptical, maybe some still are, that I'm using English at an Estonian conference for Estonian language. This is a, you know, a preconception, maybe. I'm trying to tell a story that's not about specifically about this language or the other, but trying to look at meaning so that we can eventually collaborate with our AI buddies in a way that it's not detrimental or even you know, devastating for us. So I think even though language evolves with or without us, you know, people use it and language evolves, and that's how language becomes better in a way. 
we have the responsibility to use technology in a way that you know, also supports humanity in the long run. So, as I said, I'm not an expert in this field. Take it with a grain of salt. And I hope I've sparked some internal discussion in you that you're willing to share with me. I'm here to learn. And you know, as an AI enthusiast, I have to think about everything that goes into those solutions. Philosophy, psychology, ethics, you know, besides computer science and economy that I'm able to build my startup with. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with the slides. If you point your camera towards this in any phone, your camera app, it will take you to my LinkedIn page. You can send me a connection request there, and you know, we can have a chat afterwards. So for now, thank you. Thank you, Otto. Surdano. Um, because publicus. Do we have any questions from the audience? We be out there. Kõik rahulikult nautisid sõitu. Maybe I have a question. Mul on küsimus. If the AI starts to understand technology, is it, uh, is it this uh, moment when the AI takes over the world? I think, you know, I, I come back to the idea of garbage in, garbage out. Whatever we are trying to achieve with technology, uh, we will achieve it. So, if we want to destroy another nation, another people, uh, another person, maybe, we can do that, of course. So it's, I, I think everything around AI taking over, maybe we want that, maybe we want to have help on that sort of level where we've embedded all these good human qualities to machines that will benefit our lives in general. So it's still very much up for debate, but I think it's very much up to us as well what comes out of the pipeline we're in at the moment.